Hello, my name is Dr Claudia Kinmont and I'm an art and furniture historian and I specialise in Irish material culture. Um, I am the research curator for domestic life for the Ulster Folk Museum in Belfast, which is part of the National Museums of Northern Ireland, amongst other things. Um, and I've written various books on Irish furniture and Irish rural interiors in art. Um, today I'm going to talk about the material culture of the one-roomed cabin from probably the 1841 census up to the 1851 census, the famine period, before and after the famine. I'm trying to imagine how people would have furnished the insides of their cabins um, in these, the poorest class of houses. So I'm going to start by talking a little bit about the houses themselves, um, which the one-room cabin or hovel um, was the fourth class housing as recorded in the British Census of 1841. Housing was divided into four levels. So the fourth class was the smallest, the single room. Um, and they would have varied quite a lot, these houses, and we've got various engravings of them which show um, you know, people in thatched houses, almost without, sometimes with no chimney at all, very often the chimney blocked up. The houses typically in poor condition. Um, and there are quite a lot of images from this period, from the 1840s, luckily, um, as well as many textual descriptions. So, um, thinking about the way the Irish house was organised, the smallest houses in the northwest of Ireland, in the coldest northwest of Ireland, very often had something called a bed outshot, which was an architectural recess close to the fire um, in one corner of the back wall of the house. So, this was a little bed that had its own curtains, which um, was called a bed outshot. So, we can map these houses very, very closely to the northwest of Ireland. And in the southeast, we more often have mud walled houses without outshots. It, it's a slightly warmer area climatically. Um, so it's interesting to look at those two house types to start off with. Um, and we have occasionally got a picture of the inside of um, a bed out shot house, which shows, um, actually one of them shows a stone out shot from the Illustrated London News from about 1880 with a pig under the bed. And of course the pig being under the bed was giving a lot of heat. So bringing the pig inside and letting him live with the family in the so-called buyer dwelling would um, definitely add to the heat. And he was incredibly important and precious. He was known as the gentleman that pays the rent for obvious reasons. Some of these houses were made of turf, completely of turf, and these really fascinate me. So we find these very, very black houses um, with very thick walls made of bricks cut from turf and stacked up and thatched on top. Um, so a couple of photographs of these show um, no chimney at all, um, one window at one end of one of these photographs. There's, there's several photographs of one house from... Um, McGilligan in County Derry. So the turf house is fascinating and going inside the turf house we imagine there's um, probably turf furniture as well. There's quite a lot of textual evidence to show that people built their beds and their benches and their seats literally out of turf. So they would cut it like bricks, stack it together or maybe make large pieces which they dry and then sit on. It would be quite hard um, and it would have been a skill in itself. So a couple of photographs, um, a couple of engravings from the pictorial times from 1846 show this, luckily, and the text that goes with these engravings tell us that the bed and the bench was made of turf. And we see these families sitting close to the hearth um, with their pig and their fowl, and there's a clay pipe on the floor. Um, clay pipe's kind of interesting and important um, thing that is in, in nearly all these houses for poor people. Um, but the hanging cradle is a particularly interesting object that's gone now. You know, I can't examine them. They're only there in these early images and in early texts. So the hanging cradle would be like a sort of open box suspended from the ceiling with straw ropes. Here's a straw rope. So they're quite strong, these things, and they kept the cradle off the ground. There wasn't much floor space, so kept the baby away from the marauding animals, the cats and the dogs and the pig, who is quite a danger to children. Um, the, the, the hanging cradle was an important object in its own right. So this is really interesting to see this 1846 engraving with a hanging cradle. Um, another very rare image from 1832 um, from Connery's book, The Reformer, shows... Um, the practice of sleeping in front of the fire, communally, all in one group. Um, and this engraving is really fascinating. It is the only 
naive picture of this practice but there are lots and lots of texts that describe it so there are many people that wrote how people Irish people poor Irish people particularly would sleep huddled together keeping their body heat together under one covering sometimes with a man's coat on top which is what you can see here um, the pig in the foreground and the piglets in the foreground obviously adding a huge amount of warmth to this little cabin this is a one room cabin and you can see the cow tethered again tethered with a straw rope this is a piece of straw rope to um, keep the cow under control so um, that's a very rare very important image and this sleeping in straddle this communal sleeping was something that was done apparently they lay down decently and in order according to the text at the time so um, moving on to how people ate, they also ate commonly. Um, the majority of the population, particularly in this class of house, would eat around a basket which, um, through which the boiled potato had been strained. And um, that's terribly interesting to look individually at the objects involved. So centrally to this, we have uh, a vessel called a noggin. I've got a reproduction one here, which is um, usually contains about one pint, it's made of staves, a circle of staves held together with wooden hoops or sometimes with a, a, a metal hoops. It's got one handle which is for drinking or scooping and this was the centrepiece of the Irish meal. 